Hello everyone, this is Richard, and this is episode 5 of Richard Feeds the Beast. And we are going to start out with, um, computer craft, like we usually do. And so this episode, I have something really cool to show you guys. I recently found this program on, um, the computer craft forums that creates an analog clock in Minecraft. And in order, though, it requires a 4x4 screen, which I, um, like, I made the space here for us. And so now we're going to make, um... 16 advanced monitors basically and um, we're gonna be able to create the screen so if you go in my inventory or if you go in the inventory I scavenged four I can't remember but I made a few too many sometime before and um, I have some extra gold that I recently mined and so we are going to build the um, rest of the monitors since we need 12 more now so um, I'm just gonna place all the advanced monitors down here and um, like this so, since we need each of them makes four, one recipe makes four, then we only need three there. And three makes that, so shift click. We now have 16 advanced monitors. And uh, we're going to need a place for the computer that'll control these monitors to go. So, I'm going to clear out a little spot here. Unfortunately, I can't center it, but since no one's ever going to see it anyway, I'm not really that worried about centering the computer. So, we'll put them down, and they should all combine to make one large monitor. So as you can see, they're slowly combining. And when I put these last ones down, we have one big monitor. So now we need to make two computers. But we can actually make standard computers and not advanced ones this time. Because um, since the computers are going to be displaying the information through the monitor, they don't need to be advanced for color. So we need two of these. Since we're actually going to make two, I have, I'm going to tell you in a second what the other one's going to be for. Basically, the guy made two programs, one that does the clock and one that does chimes every hour. So, um, we need a computer to control each of those programs. So, we're going to place the first one down to control our clock here. And so, I'll just start accessing this. And, um, we'll use our usual paste bin get command. And, um, I'm pretty sure I have this, yep, I have the code in my clipboard, so I just pasted it in. And we'll just name it clock. Now, I will leave a link in the description to this guy's program if you want to download it yourself and, like, read his little form page. So, if we run clock, we can back up, and you see it makes a cool little clock that says it's 2 a.m., basically, because if you look outside, it's dark right now, so it's obviously 2 a.m. And, um, that's a pretty cool analog clock, but this isn't the best part. The best part is that you can actually customize it. For example, like you see it says press Q to terminate, so we're going to terminate it, you notice it just freezes on the monitor, it doesn't really terminate or go blank. And um, we can actually edit the colors for this clock. So I wanted to make a matrix looking clock, and um, since we have that matrix looking screensaver, so I got to use the down arrow to scroll down, and then in the code itself, you notice there's actually a way where you can change the clock colors. So we want to go up first to the face filled and we want to say set that to false basically so I'm just gonna set that to false real quick and um, now we can specify these colors and um, for this part I'm just going to set the back color to black and we're gonna use black and green for this so then this part which is the face color the face isn't filled in, it's just an outline because we set um, face filled to false. And then, we're going to also specify the hand color to be green. And we're going to set the tick color, you could leave that um, black if you wanted like transparent ones. But um, I want to be able to see the ticks on the clock, so we'll also set that to green. So now I click control, save, and exit. And now we just run the clock program again. And um, this is what we got. So, the next part I want to do is the um, part that actually makes the noises every hour. And I think it also makes noises every half hour. Which, so it's going to be making noise a fair amount, actually. But um, in order to do that, I'm sorry for the lag spike there, it keeps lagging a little bit. But um, in order to do that, let me see. We've got to make a, um, we've got to make a note block. Now, we're actually going to have to upgrade it to an iron note block, because a regular note block can't um, sync with the computer craft computers. So now we got our note block, 
And um, let me actually look up the recipe for an iron note block using a little recipe tool because I forgot it. Um, so we've got iron note block here. Okay, yeah, so it's a note block in the center with iron ingots on the side, redstone, and gold. Because I usually gather all the components beforehand. So iron goes in the four corners. Redstone on the two left and right sides. The item you want to upgrade in the center that's kind of standard to feed the beast, actually. And gold on there. So now we've got our iron note block. And we got our spare computer. So I kind of put this area in the middle of the floor because I don't have any other area I could really think of to do this in. And um, we'll put the note block down. We'll put the computer down. And now we can access it even though it's the main part is kind of hidden, which is kind of strange. But So I've got on my other monitor, my real life monitor, not the game, but on the other monitor I actually have the forum topic open. And um, so he's he gave you the other paste spin link, so I was going to read that from it. So it's um, BJ, capital J, E, M, G, Y, E, and D. And then we'll name that Chimes, because that's what he named it. And so it'll say, download as Chimes. And if we run it, you can actually hear it's making noise. And it does that, I think, automatically the first time it's run, I'm pretty sure. It's just testing it. But a real good test will be when it gets to the hour here. So I'll actually raise the volume for the sound here a little bit. Just to give you an idea, a better idea what it sounds like. So let's hit back to game, and we'll wait for it to reach 7. Okay, it's nearly there. Come on, come on. Okay, and so that's what it sounds like. Anyway, um, thanks for watching this little segment. We'll actually get back to um, something else we're going to do today. I haven't quite come up with the rest, but we'll do something. And um, yeah, so more Feed the Beast is coming. Okay, we will be back. Well, hello everyone, I am back. And, um, unfortunately, a creeper blew this whole part up, as you can probably tell. So I quickly filled in with cobblestone to prevent the chickens I have here from escaping. But, um, this is just going to be a short little thing I wanted to do. And, um, maybe last episode, you remember, we started working on that bridge. And, um, I want to clean it up a little. We ran out of fence, and I never, um, added that. I never added enough fence there. So we'll just do that real quick. Um, I know it's not the greatest of bridges, you can probably tell. But um, if you guys have any suggestions, which I'm sure you do, to improve the bridge in a way that's fairly simple and make it look nicer, I would be very, very open to that. So um, I brought a crafting table with me, and we're going to just craft the last bit of fence that's kind of missing here. Um, also, I guess we're going to need to link it up with this pathway eventually. And I think what would be really cool would be if we could um, put some gravel like, I want to um, link this over with my mine, which is way out there, as well as my village, or not my village, but the other village we found. You, um, If you didn't see us do that, you can go back a clip or two, or an episode, I think it was like episode three, that I showed you guys that village. It might actually have been the start of episode four. No, I think it was episode three. But, um, yeah, so if you didn't see that part, you can go watch episode three. And, um... I'm going to try and construct fence. We're probably that's way more fence than I need actually. So I'll just take I'll just put I'll just use twelve and construct that into sticks. Okay, that makes twenty four sticks. That's way more than enough. At least I think it is to make the missing fence. Oh, and that's exactly works out. That's pretty cool. Usually it doesn't work out perfectly like that. Yeah, eight fence. I don't know actually. We're gonna need to fill in here. I know there were two missing here. Oh, I always do that misplaced stuff. Maybe if I took a little more time to look at things, I wouldn't misplace them, but okay. And um I think we need to place some fence here. So actually we might need to make some more. I don't know, that looks kinda cool. The other thing we could do is make the side parts that are logs, that would look better. And making the fence wider would probably be a cool thing, too. So, um, I'm going to head back to the main base. And I guess we'll do one or two more things before I end the episode. 
I'm sorry, guys, that this episode is probably going to be short one again, but I rushed myself again on this one, just like I did on the last Let's Play episode of Richard Plays Minecraft, and thus I do not have a whole lot of time to make an episode. Oh, that's pretty cool. You can hear the clock going off in the background. So we now know it just struck an hour or a half hour, I think. Ah, I hate having only one door because now this chicken's going to try and escape. Well, I'm just going to bust your plans, chicken. I'm just going to hop over the wall. But I don't even need that dirt. Oh, and let me grab these eggs. Oh, wow. Fail. Fail, fail, fail. Wow, there's so many eggs here. There's not even that many chickens, which is so surprising. But we still didn't get any chickens. Anyway, this clip has probably run on for far too long. Um, I'm going to come up with something else to do before we end the episode, and I will be back. Okay, I am back, and um, I decided that we should build the Twilight Forest Portal this episode, and we'll end it off there. But um, that's what I want to do. And for those of you who don't know how one's made, it'll be a cool time to show it. Crap. Creeper. Okay, good. We took care of him. Sorry I didn't talk. I had to concentrate on taking him out. But, um, so yeah, I don't know exactly where we should put it. Um, I don't really want it in my base, though, and since you have, have to surround it in natural things, according to the, um, wiki, I want to, um, let's just grab some flowers, because we have to surround it in natural things. Roses, um, okay, but, let's see, how many flowers do we have? I don't think that's enough. I don't know if the indigo flowers will work. According to the wiki post, it works with, um, roses, white flowers, and mushrooms, so we'll see if that'll work. But, um, I don't know where to exactly put it. Maybe, I think we'll eventually build a little piece of my base near, um, that bridge. So I'll just put it there for now. And I'm pretty sure it can't get destroyed. I mean, all the portals can get destroyed by, um, explosions, I think. But we'll surround this with something next episode so that I do not, um, so that it can't get destroyed. So, it is expensive to make, or somewhat. It requires one diamond. And, um, so I'll show you guys how to build it real quick. You dig a 2x2 two two hole. It's gotta only be one deep, so a 2x2x1. Two by two by and, um, then I'll just grab some of this water. And, whoops, that was a fail. Um, since they have to be on opposite sides, of course. And, um, we'll put some indigo flowers and stuff around it. I don't know, we'll see if they work just an experiment. We still need a few more flowers, yeah. It has to be completely around it. I did a little bit of testing in Creative World, and um, you have to even get these parts, like, right here. So, let me just grab a flower here. Um, yeah, I know these will work. The daisies, I think, they're, that's what they are. I think it's daisies. And, um, they're supposed to be, I don't know. And we need a couple more flowers. Grab that indigo one, and I'll grab that one. Okay. Actually, we only need one. So let's see if this works. And you're supposed to drop a diamond in, and then it's supposed to strike. Yeah, it strikes it with lightning. So um, obviously it works. I'll just show you guys what it looks like in um, Side Twilight Forest, for those of you who don't know. And then we'll have this portal here, so we'll be able to mess with it in the future like in the next episode, or maybe the episode after that. I don't know when we'll get to finish it. Right now it's dark, I guess, in the Twilight Forest. It isn't always dusk. I know they do have a different day cycle than the regular Minecraft, and it is darker a lot more, but it's not always dark in it. Okay, so here's where I spawned in. This gives you an idea of what it looks like. Not all of it is this like this, but this gives you a fairly good idea. Anyway, this is a pretty cool mod, and we can hopefully get into it in a few episodes from now. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, that'll be it for this Feed the Beast episode. Um, Richard.